What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're going to be taking a look at some absolutely stunning Dainichi Tamasaba. So make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out those links in the description and make sure you checked out our sponsors. Today, as I mentioned, we're gonna be taking a deep dive and a deep dive look into the Dainichi Tamasaba in particular. Now, Dainichi is one of, if not the best koi farms for Japanese koi in the entire world. And I've been lucky enough to visit one of his family's koi houses in particular in Japan in the Nagata area. So I know this koi farm is absolutely sensational and it also looks like they produce some absolutely stunning Japanese tamasaba as well. Tamasaba are slightly different to the Ryukin goldfish. They can get very big, they have a large round bodies and they're really well suited to the pond environment. Now this video has been actually produced by Tamasaba Homestay, which is another YouTuber on the platform. I'm gonna link down below the video to the original video or put the link down to the original video as I'm not the original content creator and owner of the footage. But as per usual, we're gonna get the footage on the screen. We're gonna do a little bit of narration and we are gonna be doing another video on the Tamasaba goldfish. So without further ado, let's get these fish on the screen and let's check them out. Now hopefully you guys would have seen my previous video I did on the Tamasaba at Marushin Koi Farm and this time we're going to be looking at the Dainichi Tamasaba. Now the Dainichi Tamasaba as I mentioned, Dainichi is an absolutely amazing koi breeder and one of if not the best in the world and you can see that those quality traits of the amazing koi have been pushed right over into the Tamasaba. Now these Tamasaba are absolutely amazing quality and I absolutely love them and I definitely would love to own some Tamasaba of anything near this quality in the future. You can see they've got really crisp white shiroji which is that white skin and there are no shimmies which refer to black spots on the skin. The Benny is a very soft on some of these fish which shows that they could be quite young. Generally when selecting smaller fish you want to look for a fish that has soft benny. Now soft benny refers to the red on the fish and the red we want to be a little bit pale, have a nice clean straight glossy look. We don't want it to be too red too early on because that shows that they have been fed a high uh, carotenoid diet which has high level of color pigmentation and this will often blemish the white skin and cause it to turn yellow. You may see that in the Rapashi Super Gold when you feed that to your goldfish sometimes the wens can turn a little bit yellow and that white skin can turn yellow as well and the high levels of this within the diet on a younger fish can slightly taint the color a little bit. So when looking at these fish we want to make sure they've got a nice pale red but nice and straight clean throughout no blemishes no difference in variation in color on those patches of red and as the fish gets older generally it should strengthen and increase the intensity as it grows up especially when buying from a high quality bloodline like this it is also it's always fine to look for that pale and slightly soft belly However, if you're buying from a fish, uh, buying a fish, sorry, that you don't know the heritage and bloodline from, often on a larger fish or a fish that is of a medium size, soft belly and weak belly can never strengthen and it will actually deteriorate over time, break up. And I've had that on a Kahaku koi I owned quite a few years ago. I had absolutely deep strong belly at a young age and as that fish grew and got bigger, it deteriorated, broke up and the red actually disappeared on a huge amount of the fish. And I was left with a fish that had these shady red spots all over it that didn't look very nice at all. So it's very important when you're selecting your Tamasaba or your goldfish in general that you're buying from a good bloodline and you know the heritage, especially if you're paying quite a large sum of money for them. If you're buying some nice tank fillers or some, some cheap fish that you're not worried about and you're just enjoying seeing the process and the change 
changes going on, then that's not too much of an issue and doesn't reflect the health of the fish, only the quality that a show would look for or a high quality hobbyist would look for in particular. You'll also notice that the body shapes are really round on these fish. They have quite a compact look to them, very similar to the Ryukin goldfish. Generally, they have shorter tails. You may notice on the slightly older generation and the older type Tamasaba that they have a fantail type tail, which can be sort of compared to a veil tail, for example. But I see on the newer generation, they're going for the slightly shorter tail and that sort of cute mini tail that some of the Chinese ranch you have as well. And that may be a slightly new thing on the block, a new type of fish that they are selecting for and looking for with the smaller tail. But I think these fish look absolutely great. Now, I believe Tamasaba are supposed to be viewed from the top, similar to their counterpart, the Japanese tab Top View Ranchu, but they also look really great from the side, just like Ryu can do. They have a real spectacular presence to them, and the larger fish, like the ones we can see here, easily fit in the palm of your hand and are absolutely huge and really, really nice fish to look at. We can also see that the head shape is quite small, and these fish don't have any wen or any jelly on the head either. They aren't they aren't like the Ryu, the Aranda, sorry, not the Ryukin. They aren't like the Aranda or like the Japanese Ranchu or the Chinese Ranchu, where they have quite a lot of wen on the head covering the eyes. These fish are sim more similarly related to the wild goldfish or the common goldfish, Crassus aratus, and they don't have that wen development. Now, they do have quite small heads similar to the Ryukin, and I believe this is just how they've been developed over time and the different genetics that are involved in breeding these. But overall, I'm really liking the patterns on these. Most fancy goldfish have one pattern throughout where it is completely connected through different blocks of colour, whether it be a calico or a red and white goldfish. They don't tend to have too much of a pattern, but we can see here we have a tancho, which is where it has the red spot on the top of the head, similar to the Japanese flag. We also have some different patches, different placements on the fish, which I believe one of the Tamasaba is a sandan, which means three steps to it, three steps down the body, and that is what sandan means. And it has also got that Marutan round spot on the head, which refers to, Marutan refers to the round spot on the head, and it also has the patches on the body, whereas the Tancho refers just to the round spot on the head with no other patches on the body. But that is it for this bowl of Tamasaba we've looked at. As you can see, super Super high quality and superb fish from the Dainichi farm and I absolutely loved having a little close look at these and I hope you guys did too but that is the end of the footage so now I'm just gonna wrap up the video. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Hopefully you really like those Tamasaba and maybe it's another variety you guys are thinking about at home. Maybe you could think about doing another setup or try and integrate them into your current system. Generally Tamasaba mostly come from Japan and there are a few dealers and uh, hobbyists out there that do import them into the UK. But if you're not from the UK, make sure to check out maybe Jimmy Goldfish and see if he can get some Tamasaba in if you're from the US or check out with your local dealer or specialist. So that is it for today's video. If you want to have your tank or your setup featured on the channel, you can send me an email at fancygoldfishfanatics at gmail.com and I'll do my best to get that into one of our series, either the Rate My Tank series or the Tank Tour series. And if you want me to do some deep dives just like this one we did today on some different goldfish varieties, then also let me know down in that comment section section. So as always, thank you all for watching. Remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping.